Hang on one second, you guys. Let's see how I can add Christopher here. Hello! There he is. Okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so we're just waiting for Christopher. He's going to be here very soon. There he is! Hello! <laughs> hey, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Yeah, it still looks bright there. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's only 5:30, so I mean the sun will be up for another few hours yet. Wow, that's amazing. It's like we're in the same country but the time zone is so different. It's like Oh yeah, it's, it's crazy different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well thank you so much for saying yes when I invited you to do our Instagram live. Um this is huge and um I'm so happy that we've met here in a little Instagram world. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh I'm truly an honor to uh that you considered me to do this and uh i'm excited to talk a little disclaimer i have two dogs and they like to bark a lot so if you hear them in the background just do your best to ignore it <laughs> oh okay. i have two kids too that might just run in here so <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i have a few questions here so um can you tell us about yourself christopher um what where were you born and raised and what are the things that you love to do yeah sure so um so yeah for those that don't know me my name is christopher cody but a lot of people just call me chris it just uh, it doesn't really matter it's uh, to me what you call me but um so i'm from originally from a small town in newfoundland called st lawrence but mm -hmm. at a pretty young age i moved my parents moved uh, pretty close to the capital and we lived just outside of St. John's in a little town called Flat Rock. So St. John's is the capital of Newfoundland. We're about 20 minutes outside of that. So that's, oh, that's where I'm living to now. No, not too far yeah. at all. Yeah. Oh, I would love to go there one day. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful here. The weather, not so much, but the people and the scenery is very nice. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. So what do you love doing when you're not, um, when, when, on your pastime? Like, I, I love being outside. So like almost anything outside is what I like to do. So like hiking and kayaking. Um, I recently really got into paddle boarding. That's a lot of fun. Oh, nice. So yeah, a a anything outside really is, is what I like to do in my free time. That's awesome. Yeah, paddle boarding is nice. I don't know how to swim. I tried it once. I fell, but I can't. <laughs> Just make sure to wear a life jacket, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm a pretty good swimmer, but yeah, always, always wear your life jacket. Okay, that's right. Okay, so um, can you share us your cleft journey? Like, what is the earliest memory that you can remember as a child? So yeah, I mean, uh, I've had, I think my cleft journey, I've, I've had three, maybe four surgeries. Three for certain, but there might be, like, one that I'm missing when I was, like, a baby or something. But um, I only remember one of the surgeries that I got when I was eight, which is that classic one where you get a bone from your hip, put in your palate, and, which I'm pretty sure almost everybody with a cleft lip and palate goes through at some point. But, um, yeah, so, like, uh, two of my biggest surgeries came before I was at the age of two. So, like, I don't really remember them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've heard stories about it, like um, – my, my my mom has told me some funny stories from when I was a kid because I was I was a really big baby. Like when I was born, I was almost eleven pounds right away. Wow! Oh. <laughs> so that that very first surgery you get where they um, or, or I think it might have been the second one where they actually attach the the cleft so the the lip is put back together. Apparently, like a lot of the babies get put in like a little straight jacket so they can't touch it. But none of the straight jackets would fit me. So the nurses had to, like, use those long, like, almost popsicle sticks. And they taped my arms, like, two on each side. So I had, like, two stints on my arms because I was too big for any of the, the jackets. Wow. Well, you must be pretty strong, too, because, like, close to 11 pounds. That's big. <laughs> I was, I was, I think I was, like, 10'6 when I was born. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was, I was a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Ten point six. Wow. Wow. Well, it's kind of nice. And like, cause my my son, he's two years old, and like, you know, as a mom, like our journey, like it's 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 kind of nice that you don't remember how it's like the pain, like you know, it's it's we always worry about yeah. our kids. 
stage? Like, are they in pain? Like, um, it's, I think it's nice that you don't remember that. Um, yeah, yeah, so. for sure. <laughs> well, um, oh. I remember from the, sorry, go ahead. I, about the bone graft. So you remember the bone graft. So yeah. was it like super painful? Like, do you recall anything from? Yeah, I remember, so I was probably around seven or eight when I had it done. And I, the, the biggest thing I remember is the scar on my hip it used to be, like, I used to have, a, like, it used to be really painful to walk. Mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, it went away pretty quickly. I would say, like, within a week, I was pretty well back to normal, like, within a couple of weeks. Like, it wasn't too bad. The, the, the hardest part about that was um, the soft food diet that we had to go on, like, for those six weeks or however long it was. That that was hard because as a kid I I loved to eat and <laughs> that was the hardest part. <laughs> oh no! Well, do you still like smoothies though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of soup and a lot of like soft pasta. So, growing up. Wow, six weeks. Well, it was that the last surgery, the bone graft, and did you have other surgeries after that? Or no, nope, that was that was my last one. Um. I know that the orthodontist wanted me to get like the jaw surgery you can get, but I just never ever felt the need to get it. And I'm pretty happy with the way everything turned out. So I don't see a reason to do it, if it especially mm -hmm. if it's only cosmetic. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, um, well, hang on. I'm just looking at my questions here. I have to like write it down. So don't miss anything. Yeah, no worries. I got them up here on the side. So I'm like glancing over every, every now and again. So as um, so can you share um, so like now we got the bone graft. So did you like growing up? Like, do you have like what's your memories in the hospital like? Did you were you scared like when you did the because I know you remember the bone graft. Were you scared going in the hospital? Um, uh, honestly, like I wasn't. Like as a kid, like the whole the, my cleft journey was pretty. Like even the nurses and the doctors and like oh my dentist always said to my mom how like easy it must have like how how easy I felt like found everything almost like I was so I guess like not carefree is the right word but it was just I was indifferent about it so like I didn't mind going to surgeries like I mean there was a little bit of like when you're first lying on the operation table and like you see all the doctors I mean as a kid you're naturally gonna be a little bit scared but all in all like it was like I don't remember being overly scared or like I just went and did what I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard too. Like I was talking to my son's orthodontics and they were saying that um, cleft kids are very strong. Like even like when I take both my kids to the dentist, like Roman would just let the dentist like open his mouth and check his teeth. And my other son, he would put up a fight. So we have to hold him. <laughs> <laughs> And here's Roman, my little cleft champ. He would just like sit there, let them check whatever. <laughs> totally I th I, honestly, I think it has something to do with like, er, like I mean, as soon as you're born, you got people like always constantly like around your face, like doing operations and whatnot. So I think like from a young age, I just kind of got used to it. Like, hmm. and uh, it, it just never, ever really bothered me too much. I used to like the hospital, like the, the, the bone graft surgery, especially I remember, I used to like where it was still a soft food, like right after, just all the jello and ice cream I could eat. And I was in heaven for that full weekend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, the jello and all the sweets. Yeah, that's Yeah, it was, it was good, good for that portion anyway. Yeah. So I forgot to ask you earlier, did you have a unilateral or um, what kind of class? Yeah, I had unilateral on both. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with, um, so how did you, like, did you do some speech therapies as well? I remember, like, see, I was at such a young age that I don't remember a whole, whole lot. But I do remember having to do some sort of, it wasn't like a speech therapy, but it was something to do with like my nostrils like one of them has a lot of trouble like intaking air so like mm -hmm. I, they would do this thing where like it'd be like a black plate and i would have to say these sentences and they would see how much airflow was going through my nose and stuff but i mean oh, like wow. that's i mean that's all i could remember and i was pretty young and it i mean it turns out nothing was ever wrong because nothing ever got fixed so i assume it was okay uh 
Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So um, with hearing, did you have any hearing issues or everything? I had a looks- lot of like tube surgeries, like tubes in the ears. I don't know if that's a common thing or not with the cleft, but from my experience, it was. Yeah. Because uh, when I was actually like first born, there was another child born at the same hospital like a month earlier with the cleft. And in a small town, it's pretty unheard of to have two. So we actually grew up being friends uh, oh. all through like junior high and stuff. Wow. But yeah, so he had, he had the same thing, tubes in his ears and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it's nice to have someone as well that you grew up with and then you guys can relate your experience and share your journey. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we, I mean, we're not so close. Any, our, our, our parents are still really close. Mm-hmm. But uh, just naturally, like, grew apart after high school with university and stuff. But, yeah, no, I still I still see him every now and again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, okay, this is another question. And, like, I've been when – I, when I made the announcement that I will be interviewing you, I have some – I have a lot of moms, like, cholesterol moms who are asking because I, I think this is one of our concerns as well. You being so successful in the sports industry, like, you know, between – from like your first surgery and to where you're at right now. So there's that in between, like, did you experience um, bullying in school and like, th- and how did you cope with it? Yeah. So, I mean, like, like most kids, I think with cleft lip or palate, I, I've, I've definitely experienced bullying as a, as a kid, but at the same time, it was nothing I ever really, like, I, I don't know. I was, I was a weird kid in that sense. Like I didn't really care. I just kind of did my own thing anyway. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was like, because one of my, de- my mom told me this story. One of my dentists actually asked me or asked her, not me, asked her like, how, how come like, I'm so like confident was the word to use. But as a kid, it was just like, I just didn't care about anything like that. And he was wondering, cause he had other like cleft lip kids and they weren't the same at all. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I think for me, it was just something that I did just, I never, ever really bothered me like I just kind of went my separate way like from a young age I saw like you know other kids could be mean <laughs> there's no doubt about that but you know I just I never ever really let it bother me I made good friends and yeah wow that's amazing I want to meet your mom I want to ask you like how did you how did you help Christopher like it's thank it's, it's like you know like this day and age especially like with being on social media like you see a yeah lot- bullying that are happening lately and it's so nice to hear it from you that it didn't really bother you and it's just like you know you're very confident like you know who you are and yeah that's right kids can be mean and I think what I've learned is like sometimes hurting people hurt people and I think at a yeah. young age you know who you are and you're confident on who you are and that's that's amazing Christopher yeah and I, at the same breath like I mean I've I still get like to this day I still get people like ask like what happened to your nose? What happened to your lips? Stuff like that. And like the most common one I get being from a combat sport was like, oh, did you like break your nose in a fight? <laughs> and like, <laughs> that one's the most common one. And, it, and it's really funny because like, I mean, people don't know and, and it's, it's not malicious and it's not to harm. It's just they genuinely don't know, right? So I usually, I usually use those opportunities. Like I'll joke around a little bit with them, but I do try and explain that like, no, I didn't break my nose. Um, but yeah, I was just born with a cleft lip and palate and I actually work at a day camp, not anymore. The last five summers I have, and a common one is the kids would ask a lot because I mean, kids are curious too and they just don't know. So I used to try and explain that to them as well. And then I would also joke around, like, I remember one little girl, she was like fascinated by it. Right. She had no idea what was happening. Where's my dog going? (laughs) Um, she had no idea what was going on. And I, I had this big story about how I got into a, a fight with a bear, and that's how I got the scar. <laughs> <laughs> Did she buy it? <laughs> oh, she bought it. She bought it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I ended up, you know, explaining it to her later. But yeah, for her, it was it was a little bit of fun for a little while. Oh, yeah. Like it's. it's I think it's. Um, I have one mom, and she said. Well, like sometimes when they see other people who are born and they're it's kind of like they don't know how to ask like you know would, 
would the person would you get offended if they ask about your car? And I think sometimes it's <laughs> asked the question as well. Like you said, you have someone asking yeah. you. Yeah, I remember my husband. Um, we have with Roman, like he was going, getting ready to go out of our door. On guy, and he said, "What's wrong with your son's nose?" My husband was like, "What do you mean? What's wrong with my son's nose?" And he's like, "There, he lost." Don't ask. Like that. No, I actually have a similar story. I was so uh, my very first. Uh, inter well, it was my second international trip. I was on the way back from Peru in 2014, and I was on the way back home, and we were going through U.S. Customs, and one of the customs officers, like he was doing, like just, you know, asking to the questions while I was in Peru and stuff, and I told him it's for a karate competition, and then he asked me, like, did you fight? And I was like, yeah, I fought. And he's like, did you win? And I was like, unfortunately, no, I lost this time. And he was like, did you break your nose? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, yeah. I didn't break my nose. No. He's like, but it's crooked. And I was like, oh, no. I didn't notice. Like, I joked, like, you know, sarcastically, because he, he was being a little bit rude about it. But I was like, oh, I, like, I had no idea. Like, I pretended I was all shocked that it was crooked. <laughs> but I told him, like, no, it's just a cleft lip. And he, you know, stamped me through. But yeah, so, like, people, you know, people just don't know about cleft. Like, it's a pretty un heard of not unheard of but it's it's just i don't think it's common knowledge about like what the condition is and and what it entails i agree because like even like i think they don't know because like especially here here in north america because like as early as like before age of one both surgeries are done and yeah. it's like in asia like i grew up from the philippines and you see a lot of people walking around like they were born with clef and like this I remember the six year old man in our small town, like he has a bilateral cleft lip. And um yeah, like he, he didn't have any surgery and I think he like I asked my parents to track him down. He they couldn't track him down. Um I think he passed away without having a surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't even know his real name because like people like has a nickname for him, which is sad, but it's like here yeah. I, in countries like Canada, the States, Australia, like in Europe we are so blessed to have like an amazing medical system that you know it does the surgery at a very young age but um in some parts of the world they don't um they don't have that but i'm curious to know as well like because not all people know about it like you know even your journey like they would ask you like you know what happened like did you did you go on a fight like you're yeah. um how does i know you you kind of you you dealt with it like you you're pretty natural when you talk back to them like <laughs> Like, how do you feel, though? Do you, are, are there times when you're just, like, want to give them, like, a big punch in their face? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm really, I'm a pretty, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty relaxed person. And, like, it, it, nothing like that ever really bothered me, you know? Like, it was just, it was just something that, you know, I just kind of, like, roll off my shoulders. It didn't ever bother me. You know, when, when I would meet people that, like, friends would ask or something like that, like, I took the time to explain it and whatnot but yeah no i just i just never ever got angry about anything like that like in my mind you, you know you can't change the way people are so why let it bother you right so exactly yeah that's amazing that's really amazing christopher i love that yeah <laughs> so okay moms if you guys are listening like we can learn from christopher here like we just gotta teach our kids to be confident and i know it's a big journey but um it's doable, right? <laughs> yeah, and and I think part of the reason I was so confident is just because, like, through sport, like, and especially through martial arts, like, it teaches you a lot, right, to, to, to stay confident and believe in yourself and stuff like that. And you build great friendships and great, you know, camaraderie through all those kinds of things. So I think, you know, if you know who's truly in your corner, then it doesn't really matter what other people think. That's true. That's true. I like that. I'm going to put my kids to martial arts. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. There's lots of great, great karate schools in BC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll look into that. That's a, that's a really good tip. Okay. So um, we talk about the bullying. We talk about growing up. So um, you talk about like growing up as well with um, another kid in um, from your, from your town. Um, so he was kind of like your community as well. Um, so with, did you get um what kind of support did you get from your from your parents and um your community growing up 
So actually, like, it, it, besides that, my, that one person I knew growing up, I have never actually met someone else in Newfoundland, like, with a cleft lip, except my aunt. My aunt has one. But, oh. um, but like, other than that, like, I had never seen anyone with a cleft. Like, honestly, I know more people, like, more people in BC that have cleft than, <laughs> than in Newfoundland. Like, it's crazy. So, like, the, in terms of, like, a community of, like, you know, cleft lip, cleft palate, like, awareness and stuff, like, I haven't really met very many people. But actually, since meeting you in January, like, it's opened my eyes and, like, I've reached out, like, some people have reached out to me, like, from the island, and they say they have a cleft, which is cool <laughs> to meet That's other people. But, yeah, no, it's, so, like, in terms of, like, a community here, it's, there's not really a big one that I know of. I mean, I'd love to maybe start, like, a little cleft awareness thing here on the island, but for now, it's just me and talking to people outside the province trying to help build awareness. And um, in terms of my parents, like, the support they gave me, my parents were, like, very relaxed kind of style of parenting and in terms of, like, supporting me with what I did. They didn't – like, they never forced me to do anything. Like, like I'm very big in the sport, but, like, almost no one else in my family is. So it was just something that I attached to, and they were like, well, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Yeah, so, like, I guess my parents' philosophy of that was, like, they didn't really care what I did. Like, if it was music or art or – you know, whatever it was, like, I wanted to do, they were all for it, just, I had to work hard at whatever I did, and enjoy it, so, that's wow. how they used to support me. <laughs> Amazing parents, wow, do you have um, siblings as well? I have one older brother, he's, yeah, he's five years older than me. Wow, wow, yeah, so, um, that's amazing, so just two boys and parents, that's amazing, just, like, I think, parents play a big role in like helping children especially like our like you know mold you into the person that you're gonna be in the future <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so um okay so um can you share okay i'm gonna check my my notes here okay yeah, so no worries. How, <laughs> how did you find your passion in sports and why karate oh, so karate particularly um, actually, my brother was the one that started karate. And oh. then, you know, growing up, being the little brother, you kind of want to do what your older brother does. Oh, yeah. So once I, tur once I turned old enough, my parents enrolled me because, you know, I really wanted to. And then from there, it just stuck. I mean, from an early age, like, I was pretty good. And then, I mean, <laughs> my dogs are going crazy. Your dog again. agrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so at an early age, you know, I turned out to be, like, pretty good. And then, um, at the age of 14, I went to my first national championships, um, and I won, actually. So became the first Newfoundlander ever to win a gold medal in karate, um, which was pretty cool. Um, and then from there, just it just kind of took off. You know, I fell in love with the sport. I really enjoyed my time in the sport. It was, I had a lot of good memories. And, um, yeah, so and I played other sports growing up, too, but it was just because – it was just something that I always liked to do. I always liked to be active. And um, all my friends did sports too, I think, which helped a lot. So, yeah. Wow. So the, so you mentioned earlier that you, you do pad, you're, you're very outgoing as well. You do paddle boarding and other stuff. So other than karate, what other sports do you love um, doing? So um, I played basketball, like, growing up a lot. And also soccer. Like, those are the two I also played alongside of karate before I really, you know, kind of worked like focused only on karate. So I like those a lot. And then just like other outdoor sports, so like paddle boarding and mountain biking. I really enjoy those. Mm -hmm. And actually since I uh, retired from karate in February, I've mm -hmm. since joined my university's track and field team as my next, <laughs> my next uh biggest, I don't know, um, endeavor, I guess, you know, I wanted to try it out. So, yeah, that's what I'm up to now. Wow. It's funny that you said that because I was reading, because there's an article about you here um, from 2018. And I think they mentioned about how fast you are when it comes to sprinting or something. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very sporty. So I thought, sprint, does he run? Like, did they run and cry? And then <laughs> you're going to be, sorry, I don't know anything about sports. Yeah. 
<laughs> like sprint. I'm like, does he run? So, and then you mentioned you're going to be in track and field. I just feel like it's yeah. Timely. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Because um, yeah, track and field is great too. So, um, is it like so? Is this just in, starting in the university, and then you're hoping to go to the national team as well? So I, no, that's like I, I mean that would be great, but <laughs> I don't really have any big plans like that. Basically, I, I had a couple of friends on the um, on the university track team, and once I retired, they kind of just you know said like, why don't you come out? Like you're a good athlete, obviously, and you've competed on the international stage for a long time. So like we think you could be a good track and field athlete just because you're you know you're a good athlete. So I said sure and. Here we are. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just giving it a go and seeing, you know, I like it so far. It's great. I'm having a lot of fun, learning lots of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. It's our everybody. Like, I think people are asking, what's next? What's next? What's next? So there you are, guys, track and field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The track and field. So, yeah. Um, I'll share this little info about me. But back in 2010, so the Vancouver Olympics, and like that was where, like, my, like, I guess, like, my, I really got into sport and my big dream was to like become an Olympian. So then, you know, I got really good at karate and then, you know, my big thing was like, Oh, I'm going to be like, I'm going to go to the Olympics for karate. That was, that was what I, my big thing was. But then I retired. So it wasn't meant to be, but I'm not giving up on that Olympic dream yet. So I, I am actually currently working on some, you know, big, hopefully some big things in the future that I won't, get too into and you know you guys can follow along and hopefully you'll see me on the olympic stage someday oh yes we will we will cheer you on for that and we're going to be praying that you're getting there <laughs> yeah. yeah amazing well i think you know like even in the very short period of time that i got to know you like i was reading some articles here about you you really have you 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 have that very like you're, you're a sports person and you're really you are driven, like you have a goal and you, you focus on the goal. And I think I admire that about you. And I think it's just you as a person, not because like, of you know, because of the class condition or so, but I think it's just mm -hmm. you that you are like, you know, this is what I want to, this is who I want to be. This is where I want to go. And you are so focused and driven to do that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for you and know that our, our clef, community is cheering you on in this one um yeah i hope so <laughs> i hope i make it there <laughs> uh, we hope so too we'll be here we'll be like on your back like cheering for you. yeah yeah uh, um okay so there is one question here i'm just gonna scroll back a little bit there's one yeah Clef mama 2019 i think it's jackie so jackie was asking did your older siblings need to be or wear or were protective over you against bullying um no not really <laughs> it was never ever because it was never ever that big a thing either yeah right so i never like if if a kid said said something to me at school like i would never ever come home and like tell my parents about it because you know i was i would just completely ignore it almost straight away right i didn't ever really care about it like that like it was never it was never big enough of a thing that my older brother would have to right so Wow. Yeah. And I, I was also very much the type of kid that like if something bothered me, I was gonna handle it right there and then. <laughs> they're probably they're probably scared to mess up with you because you know karate, right? Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll be all running. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the common joke when I, you know, I when I first meet like friends of friends or something like that and they find out what I did, they're like, Oh, I don't wanna mess with you. <laughs> like, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother used to do karate, and uh, well, just the ver like he just went for a few classes, and then he comes home when we tease him, and he'll be doing this. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I was, I'm four years older than him, so at four he would like do that, and we'll be like running. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, wow, like I'm so I'm so amazed with your story. Like really, I'm 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 so glad that I was able to ask these questions to you, and I hope that it's encouraging a lot of moms here too. Um, okay, so um, another question is, why is cleft lip and palate awareness important for you? Um, I guess the biggest thing, okay, I'll start at like the very beginning. So back in January when we first met and stuff, like I, 
that was kind of what sparked, um, you know, why cleft lip and cleft uh, lip and palate awareness is important because you know that whole uh, Wendy Williams thing that happened mm-hmm. was just like it was all just basically because because people don't know, people just don't know about it. So that's mm-hmm. you know the best way to you know spread awareness is just to educate people. So just yeah. you know uh, making people aware of what it is and. You know, it doesn't make us any different. Like, I still got two legs, four arms, and, you know, <laughs> all that. Like, it's it's all good, right? So, yeah, I just I just think it's – because I know there's a lot of kids that aren't like me and that when they get bullied, it, it is really hard on them. So, yeah, so that's why, you know, just want to be there mostly for them and educate people so that this is just, you know, it, cleft lip is just something we have. It doesn't define who we are, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's, um, yeah, it's been like Euro kids were in business since October and I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy to met, to met this, like you, Adam and Christina and Tasha and everybody else that I haven't mentioned, like this little community, like, I feel like you guys are my, my, you know, we have this little family. Yeah. Um, a little community going. Like when we go to our group text, to our group chat, it's like, hey guys, like it, it's just yeah. so nice to be a part of the community. So, and to raise awareness. And like you said, it's great that, you know, you're doing this for the younger ones. Cause like, um, like I'm sure they're looking up to you. Like what did Christopher do? Like they would have the band, right? <laughs> what yeah. Would <laughs> <laughs> what would Christopher do? Um, and, and it's amazing. Like, like, yeah, it's, it's, hearing your journey like you know i love that it didn't bother you when people are being mean like you just like yeah whatever like you know who you are you're confident about yourself and um yeah so um so before we wrap up because i want to be respectful of your time so um what advice and encouragement can you give to your um to our community and to your fellow cleft champs like if there's like a little little kids there, like teenage kids like what advice would you give so I guess, you know, my, my biggest advice, well, two things. Like, the first being about, like, the whole bullying thing. It's just, like, it, I know it's hard not to let it bother you, but my best advice is just that. Just don't let it bother you. It doesn't really matter. It, I mean, you know, people people suck sometimes. <laughs> that's, you know, that's that's just the way it is. And I, I don't think, you know, you have, you know who your friends are. You know, you know who who your, you know, your family is and who loves you. And I don't think that, you know, the bully should ever win in that situation. And like you said, you know, hurt people, hurt people. So, you know, it, part of me even just, you know, wants to tell them, you know, the, whoever's doing that to you has probably got a bit of a rough situation. So have a little bit of sympathy. And if you can educate them, be like, no, this is, you know, I'm not weird. It's just something I have. And then the other thing is, you know, more related to the sport side of my life is just, you know, whatever it is you like, whether it's music or art or cooking or you want to become a doctor or whatever it is, just work hard for it and enjoy the process. You know, that's important. I find, like, like I said, I wanted to be, you know, an Olympian for karate and obviously karate didn't work out, but I'm still working towards going to the Olympics. So, Yeah. <laughs> That's a great advice, Christopher. Like, really, that's a great advice. Like, to all you moms that are listening, um, it's a great tool for us to help our little kids to um, to grow up confident like Christopher. And, um, yeah, so, Christopher, thank you. Do you want to add something else before we wrap up our live uh, today? Just thank you so much for having me. It, it, it means a lot. And, um, yeah, so, like, talking about our, our little – group chat there like back back when everything first started back in january and i posted that that story i think that you replied to but i uh i tagged i'm a little bit of a sport nerd so i I really i follow like almost all sports and all that kind of stuff so i tagged uh actually tagged adam in one of the stories and he replied to it and i was like oh my god adam adam big hill is just (laughs) talking to me my mom was like who and i was like oh my god mom like (laughs) This guy is a gray cup, and you don't know who he is. He's like, "What's the gray cup?" And then I just had to, I just had to leave. But yeah, so um, 
yeah, no, I think our our, uh, our little awareness group is. I uh, hope hopefully it just keeps keeps growing and yeah, we keep spreading the word. Yeah, that, yeah. Ho hopefully this keeps growing and we keep spreading the word. But speaking of the January when I first met you, I had that starstruck moment with Adam as well and Christina. But I met <laughs> <laughs> I met Adam and Christina like I think sometime in um, I think November. A, a family member, um, my my husband's um, nephew he reached out to Adam and then Adam added me on, on Instagram and I'm like, who is this? And he has like a check there. I'm like, oh, like a celebrity added me. Yeah. I check. I'm like, oh, the gray cup, Winnipeg Blue Power. So I Googled him and I'm like, oh, he's on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> I started reading. I'm like, why is he following me? So I start checking. I started checking. I'm like, wow, like this guy is a celebrity. And it's like, since then our friendship started, I, I, I reach out to him and Christina and they've been so amazing. And um, that Wendy Williams situation in January, I, one of the clef moms, she sent me this link or I can't remember who I got to check it. Somebody sent it mm -hmm. to me. And I was so upset. And I'm like, I wrote a I wrote a note the next day and then I just tag everybody that I can, can remember and I know Adam has a yeah. big book. Like I tag I, I sent it to Adam and Christina and it's amazing how our team worked together and we, our voices were heard and it like you know a lot of people don't know about cleft condition and I think that was the beginning of like okay like you know we can do something and I love how Adam um, and our community in general like everybody respond there are some who are upset but most of us kind of respond with kindness and yeah and, absolutely and, yeah, like even when when wendy apologized and uh, you know like adam responded so well and i'm like wow like so much respect for our child so <laughs> yeah no i i look up to adam a lot especially you know being a, another athlete and the stuff that he's he's accomplished is just it's a it's amazing to even like think about but yeah 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 yeah, so um, so you guys, we're talking about Adam. Adam and Christina Big Hill will be live on, I think, July 23rd. So that's one, another Instagram live that you guys are going to look forward to. I'm looking forward to it as well. So, um, yeah, so Christopher, thank you so much for your time. And thank you thank for you. your words of encouragement. And for all of you guys who joined us today, thank you so much for joining us. We have another Instagram live on Friday with Tasha Tyndall. She's from Oklahoma. She is an influencer and she's also an engineer. So she's a cleft strong mom. So we would love to hear her story and her journey as well. And um, I met Tasha as well through Hero Kids. Um, and we be, and I told her that I am Lil Tucker's auntie. Um, auntie, like I'm her Asian auntie. So. <laughs> <laughs> We, become, we just become like families here. So I feel like we're all family, sisters and brothers. So um, yeah, so thank you so much, um, Christopher. And um, yeah, I'll chat with you again on our, la on our um, sorry, my, I'm starting now. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll chat again soon. Um, and for sure. We'll keep our chat on our small group chat. And if you guys, if you're a cleft strong mom or if you're born with cleft condition, feel free to add us or send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your stories and know that Absolutely. here. Okay, so All right. Have a great week, everybody. You too. All right. Thank you. Okay, bye now. Hi you guys. So tomorrow is a big month. 